grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, and a very warm welcome to uh, St. Lawrence's on this third Sunday of Easter. The sky is blue. It's a good reminder that the clouds and the storms uh, eventually go their way, and we're left again with peace and hope. And so today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and think about how that resurrection shows forth in our own lives, both individual and collective. We start by saying the words of the Gloria in praise of God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We come before God in prayer and praise, and in the quiet, we wait on God's Holy Spirit. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading is from the book of Acts and is going to be read by Duncan. A reading from the book of Acts. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is... Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will your, you nobles dishonor my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. But know that the Lord has shown me his marvellous kindness, 
When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the disciples were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise within your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See, it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day sorry, and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Colin the Caterpillar or Cuthbert the Caterpillar? Which one is the real thing? I'm glad to say that my experience of caterpillars in relation to food is limited. There's the very hungry caterpillar in the book by Eric Carl who eats an apple on Monday, two pears on Tuesday, three plums on Wednesday, four strawberries on Thursday, and so on. And eventually he becomes a butterfly. There are then the slightly less hungry, small green creatures, which arrive uninvited as additions to my vegetable box. There was, however, a very hungry caterpillar who arrived with a salad I was about to dig into whilst with friends once in Tunis, the dilemma of whether or not to complain. Among the headlines this week is the news that Marks and Spencer are taking Aldi to court over a question on the intellectual property rights of Colin the Caterpillar, 
as a celebrated high-quality cake. They're arguing that this is in contrast to Aldi's Cuthbert the Caterpillar, which they believe to be an imitation and of inferior quality, and notably lacking MS's link with Macmillan Cancer Relief. I know that this is an important issue for many in the parish, not least as the closest MS is in Pinna, which is quite a trek if Cuthbert disappears from the shelves of Aldi on Field End Road, as MS would wish. What's at stake between MS and Aldi? is who has the real thing. Is it Colin, belonging to m and for over 30 years? Or is, the, or is the Aldi equivalent just, well, pretty much the same, albeit probably at a lower price? St. Luke is also making a point about the real thing in relation to food today. Our gospel scene is set after two of the disciples have reported to the remaining nine the encounter with Jesus on the Emmaus Road. You'll remember that they felt their hearts burning within them during their encounter with Christ, his identity otherwise being hidden from them. Is this Jesus the real thing? Or is he a trick of the two disciples' minds? Today, Jesus breaks into the Eleven's discussion, coming to stand amongst them. He says, peace be with you, and then he shows them his hands and his feet. Still unsure as to whether Jesus was a ghost or not, they offer him a piece of grilled fish, which he eats in front of them. It seems to me that Luke is trying to uh, make something incontrovertible here. Whilst the Emmaus Road captures the sensation the disciples feel in Christ's presence as testimony to the resurrection, and the disciples' eyes give them visual information which might not correspond with Jesus' bodily resurrection, the reality of Jesus consuming fish before his disciples is an unmistakable witness to Jesus' physicality. This is the primary proof of what Jesus said about himself being true. It's only after this encounter with the bodily risen Christ that he explains the scriptures to them. So Jesus is the real thing. He eats grilled fish. It leads to a further question. Are we the real thing? Those of us who haven't, for the last 2,000 years, been offered Christ's side and his wounds to place our fingers in, in order to believe. Are we real followers of Jesus Christ? Well, there's a test for being real that is given here, and it's a test which is repeated in our reading from the book of Acts. Following the resurrection, Repentance is to follow with forgiveness of sins proclaimed in Christ's name. Peter calls the Israelites who have rejected God in Christ to repent, literally to turn around and turn to God. The question this begs of us today is what it is we need to turn from. How do we turn around in order to face God? Have we repented and received forgiveness of our sin through Jesus Christ? Over recent months, I believe we will all have felt the loss of God in our lives to some extent, not because of our turning from God, but simply because of the circumstances of lockdown and lack of opportunity to be present in holy places, to worship and be with our Christian family, each means by which we encounter our Lord. It's not unlike how life in general is. There are many things that distract and displace us from God, from the busyness of work through to the pain of loss. The wake up to become aware of is this creeping distance from God always gives rise to anxiety or fear. 
whenever we feel fearful of God, we can be sure that a gap has opened up between us and him. This gap is always contrary to our faith. God's perfect love casts out fear. But our distance from God always makes us want to hide from God. Whenever I register anxiety or resistance or not wanting to allow myself to be in God's presence, I know that it's time to turn around, to repent, to bring God back to mind and to sit with him. Invariably, a wave of grace comes and I find myself loved and assured again. But first, there is the conscious effort to remember God with me and to attend to him. It follows that I'm expecting that many of us will be feeling some anxiety about being back in church when this is possible again. That is from Pentecost, the 23rd of May, or from the 27th of June. It may be that some of this anxiety will have a spiritual origin and some will be more human. Renegotiating relationships, remembering where we left off, remembering someone's name, making sense of being together after time apart. Perhaps at this time, with returning to church worship little more than a month away, we can steel ourselves to be ready to desire that encounter with God and one another again. And in so doing, be ready to turn from fear, doubt of our Lord's love and care, and the obstacles we see in one another to fullness of life in him. We have hope for our future because our Lord has been risen from the dead, not as a ghost or psychological or spiritual phantasm, but as one who has a physical body such that he can eat fish. Wherever you sit personally on the Colin the Caterpillar and Cuthbert the Caterpillar debate, your faith will tell you that the risen Christ is the real thing. Whether you believe in him because your heart burns within you, in your encounter in the Emmaus Road, or because he ate fish after he rose from the dead in first century Galilee. So we proclaim our common faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God our Father. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are father of a huge human family with great richness and diversity. Help us to honour our brothers and sisters who are different to us.
We pray for the leaders of the nations in their work. We pray for our own Queen, seeing her isolation and solitude yesterday. We pray for all leaders who experience isolation as they seek to draw their people into a better future. May they see the hope of the risen Christ and be inspired. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for asking us to be your body on earth. We know that as your church we are wounded. And yet we, when we are with you, our hearts burn within us. Our common life testifies to your body risen from the dead. And so we ask that you would help us to be faithful witnesses, that you would call us to repentance, that we might seek to deepen our life with you. That we might grow in love and live out the new life that you would offer to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within our local community, we pray for all who are making adjustments to life as lockdown starts to ease. With the tubes and buses and roads getting busier. With children preparing to return to school again next week. With people working out how to venture out of their homes with the shops on the high street largely reopening, but not all of them. Holy Spirit, give us wisdom to take our time and to realize that this change is a demanding one. Help us to be gentle with ourselves and with one another. We lift you, especially those living with the trauma of loss. Thinking of those uh, particularly who work in the NHS and who now face catch-up time after so much trauma. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you stood in the midst of your disciples and said, peace be with you, and showed them your hands and your side. Your resurrection did not take away the scars of pain that you had experienced. And so we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, knowing that you are with them and that you make sense of their suffering. By name we pray for Margaret Stokes, Molly, Joanna, and Valerie. We remember those with ongoing needs, Norma Woodhouse, Rachel Club, Adam, Ashley, John, William Buckley, Andrea, Elizabeth and Douglas, Jean Stanley, Joy Alcock, Jen, Charmaine, Elizabeth Club, Henley, Billy, Denby, Liz, Maxwell, and any others known to us to be in need at this time.
Lord, may they know your healing touch and may their hearts burn within them a sign of your love. Heavenly Father, on the third day, you rose our Lord Jesus from the dead. With hope, we commit to, those, commit, commit to you those we love, but see no longer. Help us to trust in that promise that our bodies are seeds of the future that you have in store for us. We pray by name for Maria Rayner and Lindsay Anderson. And we remember those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time of year. Leslie Harris, John Williamson, Donald Collins, Harry Chastney, Walter Sturman, Thomas Boot and Sarah Dealey, Annie Owen, Barbara Weston, Ethel Reeve, Julie Vidges, Francis Mayo, Edna Pierman, Lillian Chone, and Hilda Club. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves. We ask, Lord, that you would seek out that anxiety and fear in us and help us to turn to you, that that may be overcome by your love and the confidence that you bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in women and men the image of your glory. He has placed us once more in paradise and opened to us the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Apostles, St. Lawrence, St. Stephen, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen.
rejoicing in God's new creation, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, let us keep the feast. body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few notices. Um, immediately after the service today at 11.15, um, coffee is going to be used to do some more congregational work on the interim process. We'll be learning about the friendly forest um, today. So if you're able, do please join us for that. Um, as soon as I get back home, we can make a start uh, on that. That session will be repeated uh, on a weekday evening. Um, I'm yet, Jodie's been away on holiday, so I need to find some dates from her. And as soon as those, I have those, um, I'll come back to you to offer that alternative date. Next Sunday, um, after our Sunday worship, we've got our annual parochial church meeting, our annual parish meeting. Um, I hope you've seen uh, the video that I've circulated uh, on what is planned for the year ahead, um, which is some really important stuff by way of decision making um, with regards to our five-year plan, um, really important for St. Lawrence's future, uh, but also coming up with a parish profile. Those are going to be tasks for the next PCC. So it's really important that the next PCC reflects the mix of people uh, within church so that the church's life for the next five years serves the mix of people in the parish for the next five years. Um, do contact me if you would like to be part of that PCC and uh, have part of that important decision-making uh, to be yours. As I say, the APCM... Uh, next Sunday uh, after the service. That's the point at which uh, people are elected to be on the PCC and the Inuit Synod and various other things, as well as reports for the last year and vision for the next year being laid out. Um, there's a food bank collection taking place on Wednesday next week. Um, you'll see some information about uh, food bank needs in the bulletin. Um, if you want to take a look at that from the website, uh, but as I say, collection will be on Wednesday next week if you want to bring stuff uh, along for that. Um, we're, as I said, we're back into church uh, on a sort of socially distanced basis on Pentecost, which is the 23rd of May. Um, and we are going to be back into church in what I hope will be a relatively normal setup on the 24th of June. Um, sorry, on the 27th of June, Sunday the 27th of June. Um, the other dates are given uh, in the bulletin in terms of weekday worship. Um, as, I've, as I've mentioned, uh, we're not going to have children's groups running alongside um, our worship when we're back in church. The reasons for that are laid out in the last couple of pastoral letters I've sent. So if you want to know more about that, do go back and read those letters. Um, but what I'm looking to do is have children take more of a role in leading our worship. So I'm particularly interested in young people who'd be happy to uh, read one of the lessons within the church. Um, if you or one of your children expresses even the vaguest of interests in that, um, do please give me a shout um, and I can then put you on the rotor. But more importantly, um, arrange that we rehearse that so that by the time you get to doing the reading, uh, you're happy and confident with what it is uh, you're doing uh, in leading that. Um, is that one? Afternoon tea. 
Um, Dorothy and the fellowship group have set up afternoon tea um, on the 3rd of May from 3 o'clock. Um, there will be an icing competition. It sounds like you can ice just about anything you want to, but the particular focus um, is biscuits and cakes. Um, and so there'll be a, a judged competition on that. Um, so an opportunity to have fun with icing and high calorie foods. <laughs> the Zoom information for that uh, will be out in due course and will be posted, no doubt, uh, all over the place. Let's just take a moment to be still before uh, we move from our worship to go out into the week ahead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Mm -hmm.